A woman who says she was abused by and became pregnant to her carer while in child, youth and family's custody as a teenager claims the agency failed her and she wants her case to be included in the Chief Ombudsman's investigation into Oranga Tamariki. The woman, who we will call Claire, was 14 when her parents abandoned her to the care of a 21-year-old man. The man was not an approved SIF carer, but the agency's case notes show, show it was aware the carer was having sex with Claire, who was under the age of consent, and she became pregnant to him while legally in child, youth and families custody. Claire, who is now in her 30s, went on to have several children with the man. Five of her six children are not in her care. The young the youngest was taken off her by Child, Youth and Family the day after it was born, after she'd tried to conceal the baby's birth. I want to take you back to your first pregnancy. Now, how old were you when you got pregnant with your first child? Fifteen. And who were you living with? Don't tell me the names, but generally, what home situation were you in? I was in foster care. My caregiver is the father to my first. So just to be clear, your foster father is the father of your firstborn child? Yes. Small things started happening from when I first went into his care and then gradually he started going up from there. And because I was dealing with not just him doing the sexual stuff, I was dealing with physical abuse, mental abo uh, abuse and emotional abuse from him. So it's sort of just, um, how you'd put it, is grooming. So He at, was grooming. So at 14, did you know, did you have a sense that what he was doing to you was wrong? I knew it was wrong because I'd already been through it twice in my life before I'd even gone into foster care. And I had just gotten to the point that this is all I'm good for because nobody's listening, nobody's doing anything. And this is what I have succumbed to. Like this, my purpose on this earth is now to just be a slave or a body for guys or any male in my life to treat how they want to treat. That it doesn't belong to me, it belongs to everybody else. So did you tell people? Did you tell your social worker? Who did you tell? I was constantly telling my family, my social workers, my mental health service worker for children. They can't even acknowledge it. They'd rather pass it off as something else. When you say pass it off as something else, what do you mean? Like pass it off as it being me. That it was consensual. That, that it was consensual. But rather than acknowledging that they screwed up and they failed me as a child. What did they do to try and get you out of his home? <sighs> um, when they first tried before I had children, to him, um, my social worker turned up on the on a particular day, and I had my social worker grabbing at my feet, and I had my carer grabbing at my arms. And there was a massive fight that had broken out between my carer and the social worker, and then my carer had knocked him out, and then that was it. That was the only attempt that was ever made to try and get me out of his care. Other than that, as long as I was still in the grasp of my carer, had, there was no way that they were able to do anything more. Like, I don't know. Like, Do you think they tried hard enough to get you out of that house? No. No. He used a weapon on you once, you said. Tell me what happened. Um, I was 21. Uh, I was a month off having the very last child to him. And 
it was time to come, like it was getting to the point where I was trying so hard to find that way of getting out and he attacked me on the street and outside my house. It put me in hospital and my baby having to be monitored to make sure he was okay. And the cops coming in and taking photos of my body because of him and the abuse, which he denied in court and only got community service for. Tell me what it's like when child, youth and family, Oranga Tamariki, comes and takes your children away. This is the worst feeling any mother should have to go through. Oh my God, this is the worst. It's hard to explain. I think I would prefer, and I don't mean this in the worst or bad way or anything, but I think I would have preferred to have lost my children to death than to lose them to a government agency who is only out to destroy and to really pull you down. I don't see those children. I don't know who they are. And when I met my eldest for the first time three years ago, I just about near ended up in hospital. It gave me the worst panic attack to see these children that come from me but I don't know and they don't know me. Oranga Tamariki would say, I'm sure, that they are protecting your children, that they're trying to do what is best for those kids. Can you understand that? No. What should they do? to help those children then if it's not take them away from you? Support the mother better. Instead of taking them off her because of the life situation she's in because of them, support her. Don't, don't say, oh, she can't do it because she's in a violent relationship. That violent relationship you had, uh, that she was in was created by them. Do you accept, accept that you have made some mistakes? I accept that I should have done more. I did make a mistake of um, hiding to have my daughter, but they had already sowed the seed for that to happen. When you say hiding, you mean when you were pregnant, you knew that they would take this child as soon as it was born? They had a warrant to uplift my baby at birth, yes. And when they told me that, um, before I had even had her, that they weren't going to uplift, I had already knew that they were going to. That was just them trying to make sure that I had baby in the hospital. That was your sixth child? That was number six, yes. Again, some people will wonder why you kept having babies when they kept being taken away from you. Um, I had tried the rods in my arms and they failed. I was on contraception when I fell pregnant with um, number three, but that failed. I think it might have been because of all the alcohol I was drinking to try and um, not be in the world of living this horrible life I was living at the time with my caregiver. The system, like the, the host, DHB health system, they weren't prepared to do my tubes while because of the age. You had to be a certain age. When your children, your first children were taken away from you, you, you started drinking. How, how bad was that for you? Were you in a really, really low place at that point? I, I was in the worst place I could ever possibly be in. I've never found myself in that place 
since I've never felt like I can't like, pick up an alcoholic drink and get completely plastered. Like I can drink till I'm happy, but I can't drink like I did back then. Back then I was that bad that I needed something that was going to completely wipe me out for the rest of the, the rest of the night and pretty much most of the day. So at your lowest, how much would you drink? I was going through a one litre bottle of Grant's whiskey a day. Now, Oranga Tamariki says that at the time, Sif applied for custody of Claire because of concerns about her mental health, her parents' ability to care for her, and also concerns about the older man who displayed behaviours Sif considered to be a risk to Claire. It says it made several attempts to arrange other accommodation and care for Claire, but she always returned to the older man despite the agency's repeated efforts. It says Claire refused to go to school and also refused help from her parents and family friends after the birth of her first child. Uh, and Oranga Tamariki has offered to complete a review of Claire's time in care.